Also, we're tracking shares of Pepsi this morning. They are on the move after the company saw net sales jump over 10% in the second quarter and raised its full year guidance. The food and beverage giant wasn't able to escape the impact of price hikes, though, with overall volume in its food and beverage divisions taking a hit. Hugh Johnson, PepsiCo CFO, joins us now alongside Yahoo Finance Executive Editor Brian Sazi. Hugh, great to speak with you once again, as always, on the back of these earnings reports. Uh, first, kind of broad strokes here, some of the larger catalysts and, and your key takeaway from the quarter. Yeah, good morning. Great to be with you guys as well. Uh, look, two, two sort of broad uh, themes here. Broad theme number one is our top line growth continues to be strong and very broad based. Uh, snacks and beverages both grew over 10%. North America and International both grew double digits. And, and overall, obviously, we, we've had a, a very strong first half of the year. Uh, second theme is productivity. Uh, we saw margin improvement both in the first and the second quarter, not driven by pricing, but in fact, driven by productivity. So the investments that we've made in recent years in digitalization, in automation, and in leveraging global business services to standardize the company, that's now really manifesting itself in a more efficient company and more margin improvement. And that's something that I think will sustain, not just for the back half of this year, but into 24 and beyond. So we're quite optimistic about how the company is performing right now and the fact that the initiatives that we've taken on are actually paying back in, in our results. Hugh, it's Brian here, good, good to see you. A couple months ago, we were in the same spot, probably wearing different clothes, talking about a guidance raise uh, that I think stunned a lot of people in the street. Now we are back in here today, different clothes, talking about another <laughs> guidance raise from a company in PepsiCo, Hugh, that you know this very well, doesn't normally come out here and, and raise this earlier in the year. And if you have, maybe by not by this magnitude, uh, are there parts of the business cost side product line that are surprising you on the upside and surprising the team? Yeah, in, in particular, I'd certainly point to the free to lay business, which is is really having a very, very strong year. And it, it's a product of a lot of what we've been doing down in free to lay, uh, expanding the product portfolio into a broader array of foods uh, and, it, you know, permissible snacking and, and more food like products uh, or more center of the plate food like products. And in addition to that, uh, we've really been putting quite a bit more advertising into the business as well. Uh, across PepsiCo, the advertising budget went up to 50 basis points uh, in the second quarter, and that's something that we think will sustain. So uh, the combination of the investments in the brands, the investments in innovation, and then further gains in distribution as, as we've made the supply chain uh, both further reaching and more resilient, uh, driving the free-to-lay business very, very strongly. And, and there's lots and lots of opportunity left there uh, in addition to that, International. Uh, International was up 15% in, in the quarter. So uh, in a time where obviously there, there's a lot of turbulence in the world, uh, people are, are coming to our products uh, for that simple treat, that affordable luxury, uh, that, that's uh, frankly making them feel better and, and enjoying, uh, enjoying the brand imagery and the products that we create. Um, Hugh, also the last time we talked to you, Julie here, good to see you. Um, we talked about Hi, pricing. Julie. We talked about pricing going a bit higher, and you're saying that this time you did not. You really saw the gains in Frito Lay driven by productivity. Where are you on the pricing front? Are you guys done raising prices this year? Have you ra raised them as much as you've been able to? Yeah, our, our pricing right now is in line with our commodity inflation. And that's something I do want to emphasize because it's really not the pricing that's driving the margin improvements. Pricing and commodities are basically exactly the same. Uh, as for the balance of the year, I, I would say TBD. Uh, I, you know, the, the fact that commodities have moderated, they're still inflationary. And, and I suspect even as we go into next year, commodities will still be inflationary. And with that, prices will still increase. Now, the rate of increase will come down, uh, but they prices will still increase, uh, certainly in, into next year, and we'll see how the balance of the year uh, plays its way out. I mean, not all commodities are increasing, Hugh. Wheat prices are down year over year, oil prices are down year over year. There's quite a number of commodities where there's been a lot of relief. Does that mean that people are gonna get lower prices on some products? Well, no, our, our basket of, of commodities, and keep in mind, there's no commodity that even accounts for 10% of our portfolio. So we, we touch a whole variety of commodities. Uh, our basket of commodities will continue to increase in, in price. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind as well is we tend to forward buy on commodities by about nine months. It gives us predictability in terms of our cost structure. 
So anything that you see happening right now won't impact us until about nine months from now. Hey, you're almost coming up on that one year anniversary of the investment in Celsius. It was a big play for you guys uh, in energy drinks. Since then, I I'm seeing this stuff all over the place, all over the place, new flavors, you, uh, you name it. We had now also have Monster out there purchasing up uh, the bankrupt uh, Bang brand. I mean, do you want to make Celsius fully part of your portfolio and realize even greater value from what looks to be a brand that is very much in demand? Yeah, Celsius is a, is a terrific partnership for us. I, I think when when uh, they joined uh, the PepsiCo distribution system, they, they were about a two or three market share. And I think in the recent couple of weeks, they probably have gotten close to 10%. So uh, I think we're both doing the things that they do best. They're doing great products and great branding. We're doing great execution in the marketplace and, and great distribution. I, I like the deal that we have right now. And I, I think this deal is going to serve us well for, for a number of years to come. Um, any plans on on increasing perhaps the the investment there, or to, if you're content with the deal as it is, any plans to change, expand, enhance? I, we 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 may see things evolve over time, but nothing material that that would Im impact the financials in a substantive way. I think we've got just about the right transaction right now. We may refine a few things at the edges, but by and large, I think we're pretty good. Um, Hugh, I also want to ask you about caffeine content. And I ask because Senator Chuck Schumer uh, earlier in the week uh, was highlighting the caffeine content in uh, a competing beverage called Prime, which he said was marketed to children. We're showing the caffeine content of some drinks. He talked about 200 milligrams for that drink. That's also the caffeine content for something like Celsius. When you guys are making this stuff, how much caffeine is too much caffeine? How do you think about how strong a drink like that should be and who you market it to. Yeah, I, I think the caffeine content is pretty consistent of, uh, across a lot of the energy drinks right now. Uh, and that's sort of well within side, uh, well inside what what people are are capable of of absorbing. Uh, the good news on caffeine is people tend to to self-regulate anyway. You, if you have too much caffeine, you tend to feel jumpy and all of those types of things. I, as I understand it, and I, I saw the press conference as well, uh, the concern was more related to how and who it was being marketed to rather than the caffeine levels themselves. Uh, and that's something that obviously we, we've got some fairly strict guidelines on in terms of uh, how we market our products and making sure that we're very, very responsible in the way that we market our products. Uh, tomorrow, Hugh, there, there's some reports that the WHO might put uh, a label on aspartame as, as, car, as a carcinogen. I, is there a cost to your business because of that? I mean, how disruptive is that to the portfolio? Yeah, we, we don't think so, to be candid. Uh, you know, we I've, I've been around PepsiCo for 36 years and aspartame has been around for longer than I have. So, you know, we, we, we've been uh, we, we've had aspartame in for a, a long, long time. There's been over 100 studies that have concluded uh, that that aspartame is a safe ingredient. There are 90 regulatory bodies in different countries, including the FDA here in the U.S., that have concluded that aspartame is is a safe ingredient to use. So I don't anticipate us making any change. And frankly, I think that the predominance of evidence still suggests that that uh, aspartame is is an ingredient that obviously being zero calorie helps people with late weight loss and is a safe ingredient to use. Fair enough. Uh, lastly, Hugh, before we let you go, I, I tweeted out this morning uh, a, a long term stock chart uh, on PepsiCo. It really is up and to the right. You guys have not had an earnings miss since 2009. Now you have one of the most popular tickers on the Yahoo Finance platform today for the second straight quarter. And I think there's a lot of new investors coming into your company and your brand. For those unfamiliar with your story, what, what is your secret sauce? You know, how are you able to continue to drive just this steady performance when everything around you is not steady? Yeah, I, I would point to a couple of things. No, number one, we have a great portfolio of, of salty snacks and, and beverages. And those categories are terrific categories. They both grow at about 5% a year. They're big categories. They reach about $600 billion in size. So good good size categories to, to start with. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I think we have a, a team and a culture here at PepsiCo that's capable of taking these terrific assets and just continuing to steadily grow them. You know, growth in many ways is a real value inside of PepsiCo. It's not just an objective, we all think growth. And you put that culture together with this set of assets and you get the stock chart that that you saw. So I, I couldn't be prouder of, of being a part of this terrific team. And I, I think we, we've got a company that's 
best days are actually in front of us, not behind us. And those shares are up about 2% in reaction to these numbers today. Thanks so much, Hugh. It's great to see you as always. PepsiCo CFO Hugh Johnston and Yahoo Finance Executive Editor Brian Sazi joining us for that conversation. Thanks. Thanks. Great to be with you guys.